told uh, the whole class that, uh, hey, we're going to be traitors. Uh, if you're not going to be with us, then at least give us a six month six month courtesy to, uh, you know, get so our shit before you tattle on us. Um, and uh, everyone broke up into their respective groups. Some people went off alone, uh, like Quentin. Um, <laughs> yeah, the very fitting gift. Um, to sort of mull things over, talk things over, uh, and th th thankfully we were given a very uh, simple way of knowing who was on board and who wasn't with uh, all the green dots, red dots. Um, so we, we got to work uh, convincing people to sort of, you know, be a little treasonous. Uh, for instance, uh, Qu there you go, perfect green dot. Uh, Quentin was a red dot at first because he was worried about his mother, but uh, Chad Flora went over there and uh, spoke to him, and uh, as she has done before, and uh, broke through. Um, I think... Who else was like a, a solid red dot that we needed to convince? Nia. Ward. Er. Nia and Channing. Yeah. Channing. Um, Blyby. Blyby. Technically, John and Marbrook, but we that got solved. Watchman oh, Klein. Mule, but. <laughs> Mule. He was a pretty. Like, we didn't even need to focus on it in order to. <laughs> we just kind of we need his to just like demonstrate our morality. Mm hmm. Check the little. Uh. We were able to convince uh, all the underclassmen uh, with a sort of rousing speech. Um, and uh, thankfully, with the people that we had already convinced, they sort of uh, it created like a snowball effect, I, I feel like, uh, of mm -hmm. the, the, the people, the class that they uh, trained with sort of also convincing them to, to see things our way. Last um, session, it was just us peer pressuring everyone into treason. Pretty much, yep. yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the biggest example uh, of that was, um... Oh, no! There it is, climate. Carolyn. Because at oh, like, yeah, some yeah. point, we're just like, why Why was she green? It's like, everyone else is going with it. She has nothing else to lose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rex convinced uh, Byron with <laughs> uh, a very strong, strong dialogue yeah. of... Bark. I like how the Black Watch is now, like, gaslighting people into these different things. Hey, kill yourself? Hey, commit treason to both these are hopes. You killed I yourself. Mean, like, it all started like, with gaslighting, didn't it? <laughs> um, uh, Klein was also, uh, he was yellow dot for the for the whole thing, but um, talking to uh, Sev and uh, Taco, Taco uh, convinced them, to, made him a green dot. Which just left uh, Ward, which um, uh, Cleo uh, had the idea of, hey, uh, the White Watch would never go after a few select noble families, one of them being House Lorenz, which maybe just so happens to be a part of. Um, so we uh, spoke to Maven uh, and basically gave him an offer that he couldn't refuse, saying, hey, uh, you should let Ward's Littlins, Littlins uh, stay oh, with your family. Um, and he was like, well, if I say no, then that shows that I don't believe in the cause and I do so the answer is yes um, and then we also turned over the um, uh, house Carwin coin to him uh, maybe you can make something of that uh, use it for uh, either coin or to make people look the other way or what have you uh, some kind of tactical advantage I think it was um, uh, also mentioned that <laughs> even if it quote unquote came out that Maven was a traitor, they would bury that shit so fast and so deep. <laughs> mm -hmm. At least his involvement. I was like, those kids are fine. Yeah. Um, which uh, brought Directly. Ward on board, and that was everyone in Green Dot, as far as we know. We gotta um, buy a drink to Lord Carwin when we get back. Carwin. That we do. I was Lord Carwin. Oh, my bad. Lord Carwin. Lord Carmen. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Maven went off on his own because, uh, I mean, go Maven wasn't the even there. And neither was Riker. Or Donner. <laughs> um, I heard the cascading chain is like, can't believe this guy. I'm not supposed to be here either. Can you believe this guy? I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> Fuck. I can't believe myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, can't do the bit. Then we reclaimed our rings and went back to Chrysantine. Uh, Quentin was a red dot too. That poor convinced. 
Right. Well, yeah, I, I, that was the first one I said. Yeah. Um, on okay. our way back, um, Clint went back with you this time. He went back with you. <laughs> Eventually, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clint uh, had a sending sent to him when we were at the combat zone with the undead ones from Leona Van Damion. Uh, because clever woman she is, she wouldn't meet on any terms Quint would set. Instead, she would drop sudden terms that Quint would have to agree to if he was true to his word. Uh, he met up with her at the deputy in Chrysantine. And she had already set up a bit of a safe house and many, many contingencies, which she painfully uh, pointed out. And Clint and Leona had a bit of a dialogue, a discussion on the state of the world, who's really in control of it, and what is going to happen in the very immediate future. To which Leona was a bit disappointed, hoping that Quint would know, would know as much as he thought he knew. But in reality, she knew more than him, so therefore wasn't really much help. And at Quint's insistence, he asked her to show him what she was talking about, which she did. By knocking him unconscious and pulling him out to Trincenia's domain, where she had a friend waiting. A very futuristic construct, which Uriah had taken control of. Don't know how that works, but we'll figure it out later. And in that exchange, Quint did reveal that what the, the agenda is for us treasoners, and she didn't seem particularly bothered by it, other than confirming like why we we're all out there in the first place. But she was plenty happy to just let sleeping dogs lie until things get kicked up anyways, and decided to take her leave before Captain Riker showed up, which Captain Riker did show up grabbing Quint and asking him the same question Donna had asked him of, are we sure you're not the traitor? But uh, he dragged Quint's, like, very, very injured ass uh, back to the Chrysantine hold, where an emergency meeting was called. Uh, in such, Quint divulged every bit of information he had about the exchange with Leona. Uh, still, have, he didn't disclose one critical bit of information, though, which is how to, or rather, where to go, exactly where to go, in order to go get around the Fiend's hyper-calculations of the future, which, for a reminder for all of us, is in the Huatichi Empire. A pit where no one has ever gone before. Or at least the depths of it, which will be a, a hell of a task finding out who our guide is to get back to get down there. Is it that nobody's gone there before, or that nobody's, like, survived? Gone to the bottom. There? Gone to the bottom. Yeah, so it's a, literally a place no man has ever gone before, because the person that's supposed to go down there hasn't gone has down there. Has not gotten there yet. And, or maybe never will, right? Who knows? They will get down there with our help. Anyways, uh, Quint was uh, a bit depressed at that. Uh, Jericho being silent, uh, or rather telling him to be silent as we waited for everyone to round up, and decided to double down on his uh, efforts, to which Captain Maven immediately knocked Quint out with, like, I think, well, like, a hundred-something damage. Basically, he said non-lethally. <laughs> um, At because... first, I was not sure if it was non-lethal. I was like, oh, shit. I mean, there's enough people around that it's like, we can bring him back in time, right? Yeah. Hey, I, I welcome in a new character. <laughs> um, Which we found out later, like, Quint shouldn't use his fiendish powers while inside the obfuscating... In of influence that's on the compound or else you know things can't look in but there's nothing stopping from something that's peeking out to get grabbed and tapped into and I think that's about it there's a lot of minor or more detailed conversation pieces that happened throughout all of last session but to dig into that would be it, it'd, take, it'd take a lot of time But yeah, other than that, I think that's it. Cool, cool. Anything else happen? Speak now, if I ever hold your pace. I mean, uh, like, end of the session happened. 
Yeah. Hey, why don't you tell us about it, person it's related to? Nah, I don't think I will. No. Um, Fair enough. Fucking Alistair shows up. Bradford being Mr. Uh, Dragon Mark of the... Well, not of the compound, but you know what I mean. Um, immediately detects him. Goes out and meets him. I was like, hey guy, what's up? And he's like, hey, check this out. Throws his fucking sword to the ground and turns into like a like a half dragon, I guess is the best way to phrase it. That's Ugh, I, 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 hope not, that. I hope not a half dragon. Yeah, <laughs> not by the lore weird. implications of it. Half dragon by his own... Uh, I don't know. I can't think of a sentence. He's cool. He's like fucking Godzilla over here. That's all I have to care about. He's Super Saiyan 4 for dragons. <laughs> there you go. What's an actual dragon then? 17? Five. <laughs> it's just like, it's this, then dragons. Yeah, just once they remove. In indeed, yeah. So, that... I think is everything. Uh, Katie should be here. Oh, man, why, why is it... Oh, because you green dotted it. There you go. She should be. Oh, for the, yeah. Should the, be here in a sec, but. The status? The motto? Alright. I feel so, like I might have we... something, but I will. Nope. Nah, I can't think of it. <laughs> okay. Alright. As we kick off, then, uh, Bradford, start by making me a wisdom save. I can roll you a wisdom save. I don't think I'm proficient in those. Oh, hey, it helps if you have your sheet. Open, as the kids say. Kids say that? Yeah, need not tell us. Kids say that, <laughs> right? No, none yes. of the cool kids. Thank you for confirming, not cool kid, apparently. Oh, not to GM. I caught it this time. Uh, I'm guessing straight. Mm, I wouldn't have that plus two, but I don't think it makes a difference. <laughs> Frightened and afraid you are at this uh, very imposing form he has taken on. As he walks over towards you. So, what do you think? You certainly have a presence. <laughs> he says, resisting the urge to grab his weapons. This is a friend, right? <laughs> this is a friend. As he <laughs> says that, he just chuckles a little bit. Before sinking down and letting flames cover him and you see him sort of shoulders arched forward bent over before taking a deep breath in and out and standing up straight so how do you feel about being my first pupil <laughs> uh Bradford strains himself out a bit more now that I'm assuming the frightened effect goes away it does it does, yeah. It makes sense. Um, it's, uh, for lack of better terms, would be an honor. Uh, that feels too fancy. Hell yeah. <laughs> Alright, Katie might not be here. To... Oh. No! <laughs> Someone trying to die on her. How dare they? Oh, shit. Quite rude, isn't it? Quite rude. <laughs> isn't it? You got a license to die. Dang. That's God how necromancers is. work in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't pay for it. <laughs> uh, as he steps forward, good. I need to prove that this is more than something I can. But knowledge for the watch. Mm -hmm. He puts a hand on your shoulder. So how you been? Uh... He'll take that as an opportunity to turn around as they, I'm assuming, just stride back into the compound. Correct. Yeah. Uh, good. Just had a... I'd say it's an easy mission. Eh, it wasn't an easy mission, honestly. Just a bunch of skeletons. Just got back. Good morale boost, though. Hey, good to hear. But any mission in summertime is a serious mission. Shouldn't down. True. didn't come with half the people, then it might have been much more serious. So, makes sense. How about you? How'd How did this work out? <laughs> happened in the field, actually. I had been <sighs> playing around with some concepts, trying to figure out what I can do, and it clicked. Hmm. 
he just looks around. How how long are you gonna be? Hmm. Actually, do not know the answer of Thumbhead. He says, wondering if there is an answer. Guys, Garth, questions. I think a few months. Here? No. No. Y'all are only going to be here a day or two longer. Oh, only a couple days. Okay, I retract the privy statement then, because that sounds dumb. Uh, not too long, unfortunately. Only a few days. Hmm. So that be enough. I feel like the answer is no. Well, then I guess we'll have to make it enough. <laughs> right. First steps. Dragon mm. magic. Do you know any? <laughs> Just kind of shrugs. Besides the uh, very basic ones that you kind of get from the get-go, you know? No, not what's innate to you. Actual dragon magic. In that case, no, unfortunately. Alright, that's where we'll start. But, not. <sighs> Get some rest, start fresh in the morning. Fine, I guess. <laughs> Looks <laughs> a little dour at that, because it's just like, oh, I want to do cool dragon magic. He just looks over. Oh, so eager. I mean... We're kind of we're rolling off the high of actually being very successful on the mission with no difficulty at all. I mean, like, we have such yeah. little time. It only makes sense. <laughs> You're feeling it then, yeah? Feeling good? Yeah. Feeling confident? Feeling like you could do. burn the world to a cinder? <laughs> he has a smile under his mask. I think I could manage something like that. Alright, get some coffee. Meet me at the Arcanium. We start tonight. Hell yeah! <laughs> You want anything in it, specifically? Nah, black for me. Unless you got some chili. Oh, do I have chili? Of course I have chili. <laughs> I'll work something up. I'll be there in, uh, 30 minutes. And then he heads off to go make some fucking coffee. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a good spot for him to be. <laughs> no, don't hit me with the nerd kid. No. <laughs> so, as you ready, do you do anything else? I ask. Hmm. <laughs> I'm tempted to go grab, like, maybe, like, Clint or someone in case they want to like try and not like pick up the study but like be there to convince him of high treason later <laughs> or at least get a read on him uh hmm okay. yeah I'd go do that he uh unless Clint is like in like low-key lockdown for like Try and do fiendish stuff or just to recover his health, he'd probably go pick up Clint. Or offer Clint. Okay. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, am I unlocked up? <laughs> no. As long as you're not uh, as long as you got the message, you know. That'd be crazy <laughs> if I ignored what they told me to do and did it anyways. That'd be crazy. That's nice gang. <laughs> this time. This time. Walk in, it's a note. I should have fucking expected this. <laughs> He does make sure the coffee's good first, though. And then he goes to get Clint. <laughs> just as a <some> fucking... <laughs> Bradford just as a thermos. <laughs> it doesn't fit it. I mean, like a double insulated container, probably. That's <laughs> <laughs> in a medieval society? I don't know about that, Chief. In the Black no Watch? In the Black Watch? Yeah. It's just something Lucian made by accident. It's like, oh, hey, this is really good for holding heat and cold. <laughs> Lucian's our Deus Ex Machina for random <laughs> gadgets. <laughs> Do watches just, exist? Yeah, Lucian made something like that once. L Where Lucian did you get that? Reason. That was my lab. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Lucian is the reason why Del Troy has Popeye's biscuits. 
Mm. <laughs> is, wait, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Hold on, let's take it. He was trying to like make toxins while Bradford was cooking, and accidents happened. Popeye biscuit, biscuit, no drink. That sounds it's like a war crime. It's not Popeye's. It's Big Muscle Man Chicken. You fucker. <laughs> <laughs> we can okay, call Mr. Okay. Bargeis. Mr. Bargeis. Okay, roll it back a little bit. Anyways, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Bargeis. Bargeis. <laughs> 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 Okay, sorry. Alright, alright. <laughs> I had to get one in there. Uh, so you come get me... Come get me coffee, I guess? You come with coffee, really? Yeah, he, he would show up with coffee. He'd knock on the door twice and then just bust in anyways. <laughs> you know that defeats the purpose of knocking if you just budge in anyways. Yes, it was rude. I'm excited. So Alice stays here. <laughs> also, do you want eh? coffee? <laughs> sure. Don't think I'm gonna be sleeping much anyways. Hit me. Sweet. <laughs> what, I punch him with the face now. What's the soon to be captain out here for? I think it might be much closer than you think. Like the, actually, no, it is a captain right now. He's. So, he messaged me, right? He said he had some potential Dragon Mark improvements that he could teach me. And then when he showed up, he d turned into a half a dragon. <laughs> half? A dragon? What yeah, the like the upper half. The upper half looks like a lizard or draconic, and I think he had a tail. Hard to see from an angle. And he was terrifying. Like, like magically terrifying. He was cool, but magically terrifying. Um, I'm going to go try to learn magic things. If you want to, like, tag along and, I don't know, catch up with him and see what he's doing. Or just see cool magic things. <laughs> I might take you up on that, but, uh... But, like, lean, looking at the door. He'll mage hand the door closed if it's open. Mm. Don't dragons have an adverse effect when they're out in there in the world? In the um, yeah, there was a whole corruption issue, ergo why they left. But it's a the, very temporary becoming... one. Alright. So the, I imagine there's still risk, potentially madness <clears throat> ensuing, but it. Seemingly just wears off or you could choose to deactivate it. I'll think for a second. Has he gotten any ops in this form yet? Did he say? He said he figured it out during an operation. So at mm -hmm. least part of one. I should have inquired a bit more about it. Eh, you got time. Sorry, it just gives me a bit of concern. Hmm. I suppose oh, I'm in a paranoid mood tonight. Considering everything, I don't entirely blame you. I'll be into Leon again. That's asking for her. Uh, I have an out-of-game question. Uh, all that crazy shit we talked about last Sunday, mm -hmm. about the otherworldly cross-planar implications <laughs> of the setting that we said, like, oh, you could just research, you could have stumbled upon that in research um when <laughs> is that gonna be what happens or or is there another way we're gonna introduce that crazy ass knowledge no. into the game no i think that's fine i was gonna say quinn just dreamed it or something i mean that I makes mean, perfect sense since you were unconscious the, the oh, yeah, dreams are a way to explore thoughts that are subconscious hmm. <laughs> i think we'll save that can of worms for tomorrow morning we actually go to sleep get some proper sleep just, yeah but regardless yeah, I feel like there's just something nagging at me Leona seemed to have such a grander idea of what what's happening there's gotta be something we're missing here <sighs> maybe it's not something figure it figure it. it's gonna be you <laughs> me or Dawn I'm sure Everyone else's insights are valuable, too. Don't discount yourselves. But I think I've had enough peering into the void for tonight. Let's go on Faustan. Yeah. And, uh... I really hope that the Grand Watcher didn't catch word of us and sent him. I don't think the Grand Watcher would do it himself. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. really, do I have my mm. ring? I assume not, right? Because they give me the whole debrief with like four people in here, so I assume I don't have my ring. 
Correct. Okay, yeah, but just double checking. <laughs> For clarification, I was gonna get Naya next. <laughs> oh, perfect. She she met us. So as you leave the infirmer, you hear the door start to kick in. I feel an What the hell be on that, brother? <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Nah. What was that? Remember mm -hmm. the uh Alistain, big red fella. So he kind of figured out how, the sounds of a dragon magic to an extent, and um God, you, uh, you you just kind of need to see it. He's probably going to want to actually talk to you. But uh, you want to fucking come with us and see this. <laughs> she just, like, settles down a bit. He wasn't gonna get me, brother. No, I was coming for you. I just wanted to make sure Clint was, like, looks at Clint. Looks back to her. Conscious. I give a thumbs up. <laughs> it's just like... Looks between you. Right. Now, I am not good at lying. I am telling you the truth. I was going to come for you. <laughs> He's really not. She just like pulls her jacket up some. Don woke me up out of a dead sleep in a sweat. Let's go. I guess I didn't really think about that one, actually. And they head towards the Arcanum. Bradford's the only one that knows where Alistair is. Although I doubt. Give it, pick it up. The Underclass is partying, so she's like <laughs> hung over right now. Oh, actually, that yeah, is I mean, a question. Dead, dead sleep, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Bradford has two things to help with. Uh, maybe about we sort of. Yeah. <laughs> he gives her coffee, which is, I guess, in quotation marks, laced with one of his rations. Where the hell is the exhaustion one? You laced son of a bitch. Ah, <laughs> oh, there it is. Boop. This. Because <laughs> it can just remove exhaustion, so it's like, there you go. Really waking the fuck up. Oh yeah, you definitely see her. Her angry, plodding footsteps become more lively and soft as she sips on it. Plotting. <laughs> <laughs> right a dowry that knows how to plot? Good. Plotting. A, a plotting. Cares for plotting. As you head over, you see a brief conversation happening, and as you enter, you hear, I guess you'll just have to see then. Yeah, she definitely picked up on what was happening there. Hey, yeah, dude. Perfect. My pupil has arrived. Rapid's so excited, but he feels he's probably going to get his ass handed to him. As Naya walks in, you hear, and as has mine. Thus, sort of, you see this very pale but dark black haired woman with a very bright set of red eyes staring at you as you cross through this area in a way that makes it clear she's appraising every aspect of your being. Did we ever get this person's name? Do you have it? No. Okay, just for a second. Most I've gotten is a message of steer clear of her. <laughs> so, uh, that's not fucking happening today. I was just telling Lady Amiria that we have expanded our knowledge of what is possible. Mm -hmm. He looks... <clears throat> but unfortunately, I can't do it again, right? <laughs> Dang it. However, tomorrow 
I can explain more. Demonstrate more. But for now, the basics. He looks over at Naya. Have you learned any dragon magic yet? Nah, big brother, I ain't learned none yet. Just getting the basics down. Hmm. Good. Competition is better for the soul. He looks between the two of you. And then over to Amiriel, a moment. You hear them uh, sort of whispering back and forth. Sorry, <laughs> was kind of hilarious at the second there's private conversation. Copyright languages. Oh, I was thinking about hitting it the whole time. I was just waiting for a moment. Yeah, Bradford, do you know Draconic? D does he know Draconic? Yes, Bradford I, 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 I forget some things. Okay, roll perception Goodbye. if you're trying to listen. Would Beautiful I point. be an honorable sort and listen or not listen in? Man, that's a weird <laughs> question. Hey, if you do, uh, I'll give you Bardic. <laughs> oh, man, I mean, Bardic. Dragons do get a, a legendary action that's fully for making perception check. Oh, uh, I mean, like, it's only fitting then. He, he should probably just do it. There you go. Downside, then he kind of rolled like garbage. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. You have Your guidance in my bardic. To... Oh, I didn't it's have any guidance. It is a D8, so I did have the right number. Damn! So, so instead of 18. 28, it's... No, eight. instead of 18, it's eight. 28. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm 17. You hear them sort of discussing back and forth, and Amiria says that she is both of water and fire. And that... Alastain says, perfect, then fire is the element they share between them, so that's where we can start. Easiest to point out the familiarities, or start with the familiarities. He just uh, looks around. Oh, damn, none of the dummies are out. Have you not been doing combat trading? Young Miss Umpoye. We start at the basics. Well, staying basic is why you stayed basic. I'll go get some dummies. <laughs> Bradford does his best to not laugh. <laughs> If you could feel the temperature rising in a room, <laughs> boy, it would be it would be palpable right now. He also grabs his coffee on the way back or on the way oh, over. Before coming back with some dummies, I was fully expecting you to just drop tokens that he's just dragging them by the ears. Sorry, people's tokens. Mm. While Alistair's setting up, I am going to cast this on me and Bradford. As long as they stay within 30 feet of each other, it's a free d4 on everything. For 10 minutes. Whenever things get kicked off. I mean, uh, I'm just going to toggle on Bless for the time being instead of setting up a new one. But thank you, holy crap. Now we can stack a Guidance and low gains Influence and Bardix. What can we not put on here? <laughs> Flash of genius. <laughs> Rapper goes back to the combo. Lucian! Lucian! He's asleep. Lucian's fey away. <laughs> I think Clint was on this circle in the arcane training, so I'm gonna hang out yeah. this one. I think I was like, ooh, I was here. I, I think that. this one was Halbjorn, me. Maybe you... Is that why? Yeah, I was this one. And Poya was that one. Yeah, he was asleep. You do see uh, this lady, Amira, sort of look at you, Clint, as you walk back and forth. What is your purpose here? Supporting my brother. If you want me to leave, my lady, I can leave. No, that won't be necessary, Clint. 
Every good competition needs a spectator. I should ask uh, that one over there. Puts up Refrain. Play a song where they're having a bit of sport. <laughs> he says, all right, sense. Bradford, start it off. Throw uh, what sounds good to you. Axe, javelin, dagger. Uh, dagger's too small. Uh... Dealer's choice. <laughs> Hit one of the targets for me. I just saw something on my sheet. That's fun. Um, yeah, let's go with... Javelin. I assume he's probably not a favorite enemy. Yeah. Oh, that's a good fucking throw, actually. <laughs> There's actually an undead inside that 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 skull or that I make you <laughs> eruption. Mm -hmm. As you throw it, it stabs into it, and then you hear Alastane call out in a draconic voice, and it erupts into fire all around the area. Oh, so it is what it says on the 10. <laughs> D10 damage. That's solid. All right, it's an AoE. Oh, All what right. does he say in Draconic? He says erupt. <laughs> okay, Classic. you know Classic. what? That, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He likes his catchphrases. He does. That's fair. As you set this straw dummy aflame, he just looks at it. Not bad. That's what I'm going to be teaching you. All right. So, how do I do that? <laughs> he walks over grabs the javelin looks at Naya you see it sizzling hot but almost like he absorbs the heat into himself it cools down and he hands it to her focus on making this hotter and then he slowly shows you the words and the intonation and how to say them in Draconic Mm -hmm. Time it with the exact moment of the strike. And you'll get it. Fail, mm -hmm. and you'll look really stupid. Gives a curt nod to the first part, and then the really stupid part gives a second less curt nod. <laughs> He's got this. this you see her just like look over and just reach a hand out and close it and smother the flames over there that he was gonna just let burn <laughs> Radford takes the <laughs> holds an action to cast a potential spell so you begin 